Hey, it's me, Destin. Welcome back to Smarter Every Day 2. This is the second channel. On the main channel, I did a video about how carburetors work by making a see-through carburetor. But on this channel, I want to string that out a little bit because the stuff that I did with my dad was just so cool. I want to remember it. I want it to exist on the internet. And it helped me gain a good understanding of how carburetors work. So my childhood, as you can imagine, was normal in the fact that I was just a little redneck kid running around Alabama here, but a little different in that my dad was an auto worker who was really good with mechanical stuff. And I could go up to him and ask him any kind of question and we would just go down the rabbit hole. Well, I went to visit my dad one day and he was working on his tiller and I decided, you know, I'm a mechanical engineer. I'm supposed to know how carburetors work. I should be able just to jump in and help dad, but I've got time. What if I just ask him how carburetors work? Because I have a book knowledge of carburetors and dad has a dirty fingernails knowledge of carburetors two very different things so i just suspended everything i know and I, I just asked him how everything worked and he walked me through every part of a carburetor so the first part of this video is just that conversation and i hope it helps you understand how they work or at least the assembly of a carburetor the operation of a carburetor comes in the second part of the video where we made a see-through carburetor and dad and I interact with it with a high-speed camera and we learn how these things work. It's really fun. So anyway, that's what this video is. We learn about the assembly and operation of carburetors and I hope at the end of this video, you are no longer intimidated by small engines or carburetors. Like you could go clean a carburetor on a small engine this afternoon if you take the time to watch this. So yeah, that's it. I want to say thank you to all the patrons that support Smarter Every Day on patreon.com slash smarter every day. That's huge. That lets me make content I want to make without worrying about algorithms or anything like that. I'm grateful for your support, so thank you so much. All right, let's go learn about carburetors from dad. Ready? Yeah, teach me. Taking the bowl out. So we took the old one off right here. So this is the bowl? Bowl. You see that? That's the main jet of the carburetor. See the holes in the side? Yes. It sucks gas up through there. It sucks gas in the side. So that you're adjusting. What well, doesn't suck gas? Because that's the bowl, right? Yeah, but this is full of gas. All right, look. Bowl, you got gasoline in there. Uh huh. Float. Uh huh. Where's the needle? The needle is right in here. See the needle going up and down right there? Yes, sir. And when, when your gas gums up and everything, that sticks. So the float, so a carburetor has to have gravity to work. Has to have gravity to work. These, uh, and it has to have. Ideally, you have an engine that's pointed upright. Yeah, it has to sit like that. Or you'll run out of fuel and, and the engine doesn't get any fuel. Okay, so let me get this straight. So fuel comes in right here. Yes. Hold it still so I can video here. Okay. So fuel comes in right here. Yes. Goes over and then you got two valves right here. You got a valve on the back side. that's the choke. Mm-hmm. And you got a valve over here that's the throttle, right? Yes, that's the throttle right there. You can see that. Okay. That lets more air in. Okay, this, so so I'm letting more oxygen in on, on, on the choke. Choke, you're running open right there, choking. You're and running so if lean. I want, if I want it to run more choke. rich, I close right. that off. Right. And that, that prevents oxygen from coming in on this side. Right. And so then... The gas is coming in here. It's going down into the bowl. Yes. What what forces the pressure out? What forces the gas back out through the needle? The suction from the cylinder. Okay. The suction, the intake. When the cylinder goes down. It's a vacuum. It, it sucks air through here. And when it sucks air through here, this being in the bottom of the bowl is saturated with gas. That suction pulls gas in the side right here and goes up. Oh, so this is a pass-through. This is a valve, a restriction. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And gasoline comes up through here. Okay. Because of the suction. Oh, so it enters the bowl. So this hose right here. Gasoline, liquid liquid form. Goes through the center of this hole. It goes down to the bowl, yeah. And this center... Holds the bowl on, but when you suck right here, 
a small amount of gasoline through those through those little bitty orifices. Hold it. Let me let me see those little bitty orifices. Uh huh. And when your gasoline stops up or you get any dirt in there, that's what stops up. That's why you got to filter your gas line. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. So the bowl is now full. Bowl is full. When the bowl is full, the float comes up. The needle closes the. Let's see that really. So when the bowl is full, the float comes up and closes the the fuel. Vial, so like a toilet. So you want the mixture between oxygen and gasoline in the bowl to be about right. You want it to be liquid in here. Okay. You Not full liquid. though. You want some air in there too, right? No, no, no air in here. Nothing but liquid. Okay. Air is going to come through this way, through the choke, through the air filter. Okay. And going to be sucked out. Okay. The cylinder. All right. The little squirt of gasoline comes up through the center of that. Yes, That's sir. Like the main jet. Uh, yes, sir. All right. But listen to this. Okay. Can you hear that? Yes, sir. That, that's cutting off the flow of gasoline. Gasoline, yeah. So you got gasoline always submerging this. Okay. When you pull on the starter rope, it sucks air in here. The air blowing by there pulls a vacuum, sucks gasoline up here, and it atomizes when the air meets the little bitty stream of gasoline. Uh, so it's the, uh, where's the gasoline come up? Right there. Hold on. See right in the middle? I see two holes. Right. So one of them is gas going into the bowl. Uh, yeah. No, gas going into the bowl is the needle right here. Let me pull this needle and see that. Hold on. Is the gas coming into the bowl from the needle or is the gas coming into the bowl through that bolt hole? From the needle. Got it. It's so, a valve. It's a valve. So this right here, this this hole right here, this is not this is not it coming into the bowl. This is it going out of the bowl. Right. That's the main jet going. You see out where I hit my finger with a hammer? Ooh, that hurt. Have you ever have you ever seen a, a double like that? No. Okay. <laughs> it squeezes all. Okay. All right. The gasoline goes up through here, out of that main jet and goes into, the, I think it's called a Venturi. Okay. And it's bigger on one side than it is the other side. Yep. Is it, is it a hard edge or is it a? Look at it. No, it's not hard. You polish it. In a car or something, you polish that intake. Got it. So that orifice, it's, it's a rocket nozzle is what that is. It's exactly what it is. It, okay. It pulls air in and accelerates when it goes through that restriction. When it accelerates, it's atomized as a liquid meets the airstream mm -hmm. and the atomized air or vaporized that's the word vaporized yeah. air yeah wrong word goes into the cylinder the valve closes in the cylinder your compression stroke comes up compresses the gasoline your spark plug fires pushes it back down when it pushes back down inertia makes it go down below top dead center or pushes down in the compression stroke and uh suck squeeze stroke it's the power stroke power stroke it's power stroke and a four cycle engine it'll go over one time and suck in the next time compress and power stroke again got it suck squeeze bang blow and that's a briggs that's a briggs and stratton um carburetor right there right so what's okay. bad with this carburetor why are we replacing the needle it? and seat <clears throat> the needle and seat got gummed up mm -hmm. and is it, it is it brass uh no i think it's stainless it looks like stainless so do we have some like some galvanic action going on or something yeah crud uh gasoline you know chemically decomposes yeah especially it's got ethanol in it uh turns into schlack i've heard that uh, it does. It turns into a shellac smelling like thing, but the ethanol really is not a problem. The ethanol, you don't hear people, you don't see people sitting on the side road anymore because they got water in their gasoline because eth ethanol makes the water mix with the gas. Really? It does. I've never heard anybody tell me what's good about ethanol. 
Well, what's good about ethanol is the water mixes with the gasoline and a little bit of water in your fuel system doesn't kill your engine. Because, oh, because gasoline and water... Different specific gravities, they don't mix. They don't mix, but when you've got ethanol in there, it makes it more homogeneous. It does. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, so can I teach you how this works now? Yeah. <clears throat> Based on what you just taught me? Okay. Okay, so we need gasoline and we need air and we need them at the right mixture right. In, inside our engine. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is how to bring air into the system and that's the choke right here, which we- Well, that, that restricts the airflow. That restricts the airflow. You got yeah, so that's running wide open. That's that's a- No choke. A lean mixture. Right. And that's a rich mixture. Right. So when I start an engine and I'm having trouble, I want to run a, a rich mixture. Okay. So that's how I'd crank the engine, and then I'd run wide open after that. Right. Okay. So after it warms up a little bit. After it warms up. Okay. So I'm bringing, I'm bringing air into the engine there. Mm -hmm. um, let's just start with a vacuum on this side. So a vacuum mm -hmm. on on this side, the engine side of the carburetor is doing all the work. All right, your finger right there. The vacuum will pull this open. The vacuum will pull the throttle open. Yeah. Really, it's balanced like that. Yeah. Okay, so the vacuum will pull the throttle open, and then that makes a vacuum down there in the bottom, and it pulls... Liquid gasoline up out of the bowl. Out of the bowl yep. through that little screw over there. Yep. Okay. Yep, through that little screw from the bottom. You got a pilot hole right there and a smaller hole going in both sides here, so... When the gasoline flows in there, it's already turbulent. Got it. Turbulent. Yeah. So it's mixing. So, so, so this is the bowl. So when the bowl, which is gravity fed, mm -hmm. uh, well, hold on, the mixture is controlled by gravity. Mm -hmm. As the float comes up, it's it it closes off that needle. That needle right. It's really hard to see on this camera. That needle right there. Mm -hmm. So as I as I move it, you can see right there. Okay. So let me get a pair of needle nose and I'll pull the needle out. All right. I got some on my hip. If it wasn't bent, the needle would just slide out. Do it. It should just slide out, but I bent it the first time I took it apart because it was all gummed up. How many carburetors have you worked on in your life? Too many. Too many. I've, I'm a child of injection. Uh, that's the float. And that's the needle. That's the needle. Ooh. Can you put it back in my hand so I can focus on it? Okay. Oh, it's it's like a two-stage. Mm -hmm. Huh. It says, how much do you want? And it's got a cylinder there. And at one point it goes, and that that's a strange, here, you can hold the carburetor. Mm -hmm. It's a strange triangular shape. Mm-hmm. Interesting. If you could see down in there, all that is is a... Hold it still so I can focus. Plastic. Uh-huh. And it just seats in there just like every other valve you use in plumbing. Right. It just seats in there. You tap it in with a pin punch. Okay. So we've got... Um, so now the float... The float allows... Well, no. The needle allows fuel to go into the bowl. Right. And then the bowl... Um, is pressurized or not pressurized? It's actually under negative pressure because of the vacuum. Right. And then you suck the the gasoline up through the hole, that little bolt that's in the bottom. Yeah. In your hand there. Yeah. It, so so the gas goes back through there. It pops up into the venturi, and the flow of the venturi. Yes. Is what actually makes the uh, the vaporization happen. Right. So how how do you flood an engine? You flood an engine by being too rich, too rich for one thing. Uh, and the bowl gets you, full. If you're <gasps> oh wait, if the if the fuel gets over the float. Uh yeah, that that's true. If fuel gets over the float, it'll it'll flow around and everything. But when you flood an engine, you're too rich, and you get out there and you saturate your spark plug, and your spark plug cannot fire. Okay, so that's downstream of the carburetor. Yeah. Okay, got it, got it. Give it too much gasoline, you just soak everything down. But if gasoline sits in the bowl, mm -hmm. gasoline sits in the bottom of this bowl for two years. Oh, yeah. That's then, what happened to this. So you got to get in there and you got to clean that out. Yep. Carburetor choke cleaner. Okay. 
quickly dissolves gum and varnish. <laughs> hey, did you, you didn't buy that at at, at the, the part store that I did? <laughs> did you? Mm -hmm. All right. I did. What do you mean? When we were in isolation? Yeah. No, I had that here. Awesome. I feel like I understand how carburetors work. You still got the needle? Yes, sir. Here's the way you reassemble. Watch. The needle hooks right in there. This instruction's going poorly. It is. See the needle hanging? Yes, I see it. Let me get the bubble. All right. So you do a carburetor upside down is how you do it. Uh-huh. Let slide the needle in there where the seat is. Uh-huh. You get the pin. Which you lose. Usually you lose it. Or you bend it. This should just slide in very easily. I think you got to align that hole. You do. All right, and once it's in there, the bowl right there keeps it from coming out. But I'm gonna have to squeeze it a little bit because I bent it the first time it come out because it was all shellac. If I were to take that new carburetor apart, mm -hmm. that pin would just fall out. Got it. Oh, okay, because you don't want any restriction on that. No. The, you want the bowl to float freely. Uh, when I turn it over, the float to float freely. Yeah, you want that. And okay. that's what I didn't have because the shellac and gum was just cementing the... Uh, the needle into the... needle the... in position. So it's a function of the resistance of the needle and that hinge. Yes. Okay. And then you put it in. There's a O-ring around here and an O-ring around here. And if it were transparent and you could look at it, the gasoline would be about halfway to three quarters of the way up right here. Because of the setting of the float. On the old tractors, on the old John Deere tractors, it was a glass bowl. Literally a glass bowl. Glass bowl. That you could look at. Yes. That would get broke every once in a while? I've never seen one broke. It was thick glass. But when it would gum up and everything, you could definitely see it. So that was a way you could troubleshoot instantly. Oh, yeah. You know, if you had fuel. You know, if you had fuel come down to the carburetor. So if you want to... And the carburetor for John Deere didn't look much different than that right there. If you want to fix a carburetor, you walk up, the first thing you do is take the bowl off? Uh, take this out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And see if you're... That, this is a main jet right there. Yeah. It's, it's stopped up. And you run a wire, you get a piece of wire from your loaf of bread that's twisted. Take the plastic off of it and run it through there like that and run it through there like that and make sure you can blow through it. or Because you, you might have trash in there. Yes. Or you take that carburetor cleaner right there and blow it on top. And they actually have a countersink on some of these that you can put that little stem in. So you can pressurize the whole system. Yes, you can. Interesting. And once you uh, drop that needle and seat out, you take this spray up around the thing. You don't want to put anything in there. If you put a nick in that seat at all, you'll never sell, sell off the gas. And that's what's wrong with this one. Which seat? The seat between the needle and the seat? Yeah. The seat, so, yeah, it's just... It's polished. Plastic. Yeah, it is. Got it. And that's a carburetor. That is a carburetor. Okay, so Dad's teaching me about carburetors. We've spent the time to make these 3D carburetors that we can see through, right? Right. So I want to look at this first, right? So this is the carburetor that's very similar to the one, the tiller that you showed me how to build, rebuild, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so here is the tiller. So my thought is I want to run that tiller with a carburetor that we can see what's going on, Yep. right? Yep. And so this is the evolution of design. We started with the Venturi here, then uh, went along the way. We knew we needed a bowl, we need the Venturi all the way up, all these iterations, and we ended up here. This carburetor has a Venturi on top. It's got the bowl down in the bottom. As the bowl um, has the float in it here, this needle, it's way back in there, it's kind of hard to see. As the float comes up, 
it'll stop up that needle there. And we also have the choke and the throttle. And can you explain what the choke and the throttle are for, just so I make sure I understand? Well, the choke, when you want to be richer to start it, you can choke it a little bit, restrict the amount of air going in, makes it more rich. And the throttle is how much vapor actually gets to the combustion chamber. Uh huh. But the choke, once you start it with a rich mixture, you open the choke up, allow more air to go in, and the throttle gives it more or less, have to be careful not break that. Yeah. More or less fuel air mixture going into the combustion chamber. Ideally, you could use the choke and the throttle to get your stoichiometry right, and you can have an ideal mixture. Right. So right. What, what I want to do is I want to see that. And the mm. idea of seeing that is using a high-speed camera here to basically look inside that Venturi to see if we can see a little puff of cloud downstream. It should be downstream of the Venturi, right? Yes, yes. Downstream of the throat, I should say. Yes. It should be vaporizing or here on the suction side. Have lots of air coming in here, a little bit of fuel, liquid fuel coming in here, and a fuel air mixture going out there to the combustion chamber. Oh, but it would only vaporize like when you have negative pressure on the engine side. Right, so of course. So on the, what do you call the stroke? Where intake stroke. Intake. Intake. So on intake, we should see a cloud. On the exhaust stroke, we should not see a cloud. Is that true? Uh, on the intake, your intake valve is open. It lets it suck going that way. You get down to the bottom dead center and you come back up during a compression stroke. That vaporized air uh, mm -hmm. fuel mixture uh, combusts, pushes it down. When the, the next, when the piston comes back up, it, the exhaust valve opens, the exhaust goes out, exhaust valve closes, intake valve opens, and you suck in the next charge of air fuel mixture. What cars did you have that had a carburetor? 69 Roadrunner, dual line Holly. I hated that thing. Because <laughs> <laughs> you had to fix it? I couldn't get it to run right. Sure could. It'd run good at high speed, but wouldn't run at idle. Get it to run at idle, it, it, uh, it was bad at high speed. You know, I could not get the mixture right. It's more of an art than a science. Uh, I bought a carter to go on it, which is, I think, what Chrysler used at the time. I put it on, didn't touch anything, everything run right. Really? Yeah. So the engineers at the plant... Oh, they knew what they were doing. They yeah. tuned it. Yeah. And amateur uh, young men who thought they could improve things screwed everything up. Were you about to say rednecks? <laughs> <laughs> I was. I was. But there's rednecks everywhere. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can see. What about the fuel source here? Yep. We got to do that too. You want to see the fuel running in there and let watch a bowl come up? Oh, that's a great idea. Ready? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to open the fuel. Here goes. And it'll just fill up. It should. It oh, should it's be doing it. <laughs> I don't know why. Didn't you know that's what the No, I did for? not know that was what was going to happen. Well, yeah. The I mean, it's obvious now that you do yeah. it. Ah. That's what the fire extinguisher is for. So as the gas is flowing in, mm -hmm. like we've already, <laughs> the see-through carburetor concept has already... Yeah taught me things so like as soon as you that's why ethanol is such a big deal because it sits in the bowl like that and turns to schlack right it gets gummy well just gasoline does this chemically decomposes over time yeah uh, it will evaporate it will vaporize and and the what's left and what you're seeing now is the the float is down letting the gasoline flow your tank has to be vented also, so air can go in here and gasoline can run down here. When that float comes up, it will cut off the flow and it will have a happy level there. About time for the boat, the float to start moving up. When you run out of fuel, this bowl right here, yeah. Thump that right there. Let's see, let me make sure. Okay, I think, yeah. Our float came up. No, I would have expected the uh, float to be half submerged. Yeah. Boy. 
it's it's a pretty complicated uh but now we have liquid fuel down here and we have a straw sticking down in there which is the main jet is what that is on some carburetors you control the throttle by putting a tapered needle in and out of that main jet uh-huh to control the flow to control the flow but on this one you control it here gotcha so given this right now we should be able to crank this up and she should run right i think so all right so how about now backfiring is an issue right it is an issue and how about getting this <laughs> ready to go yeah because we spilled some gasoline a few minutes ago so so if if a backfire happens if i understand correctly fire is going to come backwards back into the carburetor mm -hmm. and we did not pressure test this carburetor right so this this could explode and all this gas could be on fire and go around us right hopefully not <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay so what we will have the okay our, our fuel is about half the bowl full that's pretty good design so far okay i don't know if this uh the diameter of this incoming fuel flow would be enough to run it at high RPM for very long. I I don't I don't think we we're, this this bad boy's ready to go. Okay. Okay. All right. So um, I say we goggle up. Okay. There you go. What do you think? Yep. <laughs> I'm a little mad at myself for not realizing that the bowl would just flow up as soon as we open the valve. I Ooh. I don't. I'm just. I should have known that. I well, that, that's the purpose of the needle and seat in the boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and the float. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so. A lot of those floats are made out of brass. Yeah. Like a brass foil, kind of like aluminum foil. Uh-huh. And they'd get a pinhole in them, get fuel on the inside, and they wouldn't float. And you never could cut off the flow of fuel. So is it better to, they wouldn't float, they would just, oh, I see. They're plastic now, and they even make foam ones now. That makes but they would be closed they, cell phone would be important wouldn't it yeah yeah all but right. they used to use brass all right this is cool okay now if it starts we're going to have to control the speed of the engine here uh-huh and we are in a choke position right there well we need a way to turn off that uh fuel if we need to that clamp right there so we can do that well, if you do that, it's going to burn all the fuel in the bowl. Yeah, which is fine. Yeah. So choking, it's going to be, or just stop, putting your thumb over that would stop yeah, it. Yeah, it'd stop the air. That's true. Yeah. You feel good about this? Yeah. I think the gas that we spilled is now evaporated and gone away. Okay. As a matter of fact, open the door just a little bit to let whatever vapors here on the floor go out. Okay. Well, we may be able to, I just want the lighting. Yeah, that looks good, lighting-wise. That looks fine. Mm -hmm. How about we run it like this? Okay. Okay. Are you excited about this? Yeah. I think we're about mid-throttle. I don't think the throttle means anything. We had to guess at everything, right? Okay. So, that means nothing. Okay, so the original throttle is here. So, if I want slow or fast, what's happening over here? You have a connecting rod here that... Slow. Uh-huh. Would go down like this, cut off the So if if I go boom, that's that's slow. Yeah, if you pull that way. If I pull, it pulls that in and that would control that, the throttle. That would open it up. Yeah. So there'd be a control linkage there. Yes. Okay. So I think the first time we filled it up, the float was dragging on the side of the bowl, or the needle was not properly seated in that little tube going to the seat. So we have too much fuel in it right now, but let's just burn it off if we can. See what happens. I'm ready, yeah. Ready? Your choke is on all the way right now, so we're going to open that up, right? Very little. Okay. We want a rich mixture to start it. Okay. Start. Ready? Yeah. I don't think we have ignition. So you need fuel, fire. Hold on, let me pull this over. All right, give it a shot. Oh, I saw some vapor. Did you? Hey, on the intake stroke. Yeah, I'm, we're going to see it. Okay, I triggered. 
We can kill it. Kill it, yeah. You can see the vapor in the intake. Can you? Yeah, you can. Oh. Did you see it? No. What do you mean you didn't see that? I was looking for fire. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not? Like, no. You can see vapor. I like, could see something right in here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did you catch it with the? I, I don't know. I think I, I hit the buttons. <laughs> Let's, uh, okay. Yeah. So we got a wide angle shot. That was such a large amount of work for such a little payoff. <laughs> okay. All right, here, let's go look at it. All right. All right, so I don't know how this works. Yeah, see our fuel levels above our float. Yeah, why is that bad? Uh, Just say it. You're getting too much fuel. Too much fuel? Yeah. Too much fuel. Of course it's not running out the top. You notice the way it was running rich and I opened the choke up a little bit? No, I did not. Yeah, it was running rich and sputtering, sput, 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 sput. So I opened the choke up so it would lean out the mixture and it started running smoother. Like it like it was actually supposed to be used? Well, yeah, that's where it's, <laughs> that's where it's supposed to work. <laughs> All right. That's really, really cool. All right, so here, let's let's look at this. I could see it right up in here a little bit. Oh, you're, I got it with your, you were adjusting it. Yeah. Oh yeah, you see vapor, don't you? Oh, look at that. Look at that. You see it? Yep. You can see the vortex behind the throttle. Do you see that? You can. Oh, it is. It is. Okay, so that's intake. Yep. Look, you can actually see it squirting. Okay, so that's too much. Okay, we got so many things wrong. There's so many things wrong with this, right? What? Well, first of all, look at our bowl. Yes. The gas is over... Overfilled, yeah. Over, over the float. We've submerged the float. Is that what it means for it to be flooded? No, no. Flooded is when you have so much fuel in here that it In wets. the throttle body. Yeah. In the intake. This is intake. That's what they were polishing. We were talking about earlier about polishing. So you're polishing downstream of the Venturi. So that everything will flow quickly and smoothly into the combustion chamber. Okay, sounds good. That's where they polished. Okay. But yeah, you, you can see air, air fuel mixture going into the combustion chamber. And so that's ex ex uh, exhaust stroke. This is intake. No, in fire intake is, is when it's sucking in. Right. Intake. Yeah. Fire. Intake valve closes, closes fire. exhaust stroke. Yes. And Another intake. intake. Right. Okay, so you're actually adjusting the choke right now. Yes. So? Because it was running rough. I open it up a little bit and it'll it'll start increase. So this is so fast we can't see what's happening. You can actually see the fuel jumping up in there. Yeah. Well but, we could crank it and let it run and then I'm listening. Uh, take another high-speed shot with it running in a stable condition, you know. So can you run two cylinders off of one carburetor? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or really? three or four. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. The, the carburetor, all it does is mix fuel and air. And, yeah, you got one carburetor runs eight cylinders. Are you serious? Yeah. So it's running really, really fast. Yeah. It's atomizing air. Each cylinder sucks in what it can use burns it sucks in only what it can use uh, volumetrically right now my motorcycle has a carburetor for each cylinder and you have to balance those because if you have one one that's hitting harder because it's getting a different right it won't run smooth at all so the advantage of running multiple cylinders off of one carburetor is you get the same stoichiometric mixture throughout yes but it has to have a higher flow rate i would say so so the orifice diameter is a function of flow rate at certain pressures you're or other way around. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know what you're saying, but you have to have enough airflow and fuel flow to feed all eight cylinders. Got it. Okay. Look at this one. So. Oh, so you have two high-speed cameras running. Yes. Okay. So this is this one provides context, and that one zoom in. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can see it right there, can't you? Yeah. Yeah, 
on the one cylinder, you say pulse, 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 suction, suction, suction. But if you had an eight cylinder, it would be almost continuous flow, probably. You could actually see the dwell time between cylinders. I like how everything's shaking. Yeah. And you can see the crank turning. That's cool. And everything's it? in time. That's where I was adjusting. Maybe I shouldn't have done that on frame. But Who cares? It's awesome. We're running a see-through carburetor engine. I was trying to make it smooth out. Well, that's the that's why you're here, because you intuitively knew. I mean, yeah, I, I know how to do it on a lawnmower because I'm sitting in the yeah. seat and I know how to operate it. But you know how you have a different understanding of, or I guess I should say, relationship with carburetors than I have. Because mm -hmm. this is how you grew up. You didn't just I, turn the key and go. Yeah, I could hear the mixture being rich. Yeah. Yeah. Or lean, you could tell. Yeah. More of a cough if it was lean. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm going to go get Trent real quick. Okay. I want him to see this. So here's the question. If if I have a cylinder, it is a set volume on the, the intake stroke. Mm -hmm. I know I'm going to have a set amount of air or volume mixture, yeah. whatever, come into that thing, right? Mm -hmm. I understand what the choke does. It provides head pressure on the backside. It's mm -hmm. like how hard I have to pull. Mm -hmm all that stuff. What I don't understand is the throttle side because all that volume is going to come out one way or the other. So either going to come from the, the inside on the inlet or it's going to come from the bowl. Right. And that's, I understand how it controls my mixture on yes. the choke side. I don't understand what the throttle is doing. It allows more to get to the combustion chamber. But the same amount is going to go into the cylinder every time. No, no. It, I, it should depend on your atmospheric pressure, but if you choke it off, you only get get a half charge. If you let it flow, you'll get more air fuel mixture in there, which will give you a stronger stroke. Okay, got it. So got the, it. So the 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 cylinder is a vacuum. Yes. It's a negative pressure. Yes. And if I don't allow more to flow in, right. Uh, you just have, get, You don't have. So, so when I cut off the valve, mm -hmm. you know, when I'm at maximum stroke on my intake, mm -hmm. when I cut off the valve, I've got a set amount of pressure there and then I compress it and then boom. Yeah. And so I just didn't pull my syringe hard enough. Well, your syringe is gonna move no matter what, but if you close that off, the engine's gonna die because it gets no fuel air. Okay. If you open it up, you get more and it accelerates and runs faster. Normally you cut your engine off by closing your throttle. throttle. But we don't have a throttle that we can close all the way because we didn't have the butterfly set correctly on our tolerances. Well, we got good enough to run. All right. So and we can open it up. So you want to run it? Yeah. Let's just run it. Yeah. Okay. I want to see the vortex shedding off the backside of the throttle. Let's butterfly. see if we can. Let's see if yeah. we can. Well, see if we can make let, it run Let's smooth. just get it run first. Okay. All Ready? Right. No, I'm not. One second. At first, I didn't think we had uh, ignition. You got to have four things for it to work. You have to have fuel, air, ignition, and compression. Or compression and ignition. Fuel, air, fire, compression. Right. Okay. Maybe not in that order, but we're going to start the engine by running rich, and we got enough airflow we know it'll run. I'm going to run rich by restricting the flow of air. It lets the, the vacuum increase up more. As it warms up, I'm going to open up the air, let more air in, and I'm going to control the throttle right here. All right, and then I'm going to get that on high speed as you do that. Where's the... Right there. Fire extinguisher? Yeah. Just in case. With the garage door open, all the vapor goes out. It hugs the ground. Here we go. So there's a uh, there's no spring so, to hold the choke. So open, there's but, a delay. But you could see you could see there what I wanted to see. But but when you throw, I didn't trigger. I forgot to trigger the high speed camera. Well, that's okay. You yeah. can see it on that camera. Yeah, but when when you throttle up, 
it takes a second for the engine to spin up because of inertia in the engine. It's got to suck it in there, yeah. Right. Okay, I was, I, that's what okay. this is right here. On this throttle right here. Those little holes? There's little bitty holes yeah. on the side, and that's a transition. So like as you're closing down or opening the throttle, it needs that extra fuel to come over so that it helps you transition. I, we don't have that. No, we don't have a... That's why... We don't have an idle setting, do we? Yeah. That's why this right here... That's why this, this one right here has this hole up in the top right of the throttle. Yeah. See that? Yeah. That's to help. It says it's for a transition. Like in between throttle up and throttle down, mm -hmm. it needs to be able to like smoothly do that. Yeah. I understand carburetors now. Better? Way better. Yeah. yeah I, I, mean, I guess nobody actually 100% understands. Well, I couldn't do what I wanted to do. I could not make it run because it wouldn't hold its setting in the position. But, man, it worked. So, when you just went wide open, would it run wide open? Well, I didn't want it to run away. Try it. We got a fire extinguisher. Well, you got centrifugal forces. You, you can tear the engine up. You can run way too fast. You got governors. You got throttles. You got control in a factory built carburetor that we don't have here. You could get. You could. I could get hurt. We could tear the engine all to pieces. Okay. By supplying more, it'll run faster than it's designed to run. Let's run it steady state as fast as you're comfortable. I'll try to, but I can't. I'm gonna have to put a finger right there. I think it'll just start right now without a choke. I put think a it's finger warm. or a finger? A finger? <laughs> uh, a piece of tape to hold the choke open. I think it'll start. cool you can just kill it with your thumb all right so I, I triggered that it's awesome so you you ran the choke at about halfway what would you change on this design like now, what would you change? I would make the controls stiffer so that when you put them in position, they would hold themselves. Okay. That's what I would do. That's what those ridges were an attempt to do, is to make detents, mm -hmm. but you're saying we need a finer resolution control. The engine sucks the throttle open. You're saying open. the engine sucks? <laughs> the engine sucks the throttle open, yes. Oh, does it? It does run away. If you don't physically restrain it, it gets faster and faster and faster. Really? There's no governor, yes. And that makes sense. Yes. That makes sense because the, the load is asymmetric on that, isn't it? Yeah. It's trying to pull that open. Okay. And I'm holding it there so that it does not because I don't want it to... Run away. Right. Oh, that's so fascinating. What if we now get a tight lens and we get really, really close just from the entrance of the throat uh, of, the, of the Venturi, Venturi. there? Venturi to the back side of, of the throttle. Where you can see the actual squirt. You can see the squirt of the fuel come up. Can you see that now? Barely. Can you zoom into that? Is yes, sir, possible? I can. I can get a tighter lens, we can zoom in, and we can see the, the fuel come up into the Venturi, and then we can get see it vaporize. Away. Get yes. blown away. You wanna do that? Yeah. Okay. This one is running it way slower, so it's providing more context. Okay. So this one's running at like, if I recall, 1,500 frames per second. Okay. So you can see what you're doing a lot better. 
But normally, you feel how tough it is to move this? Yes. That's why the throttle runs a steady state. That's difficult to move on purpose so that the engine can't get all the juice it wants. So that, the how hard it is to move a throttle is a design on purpose. Yes. They do that. To keep a steady state, yes. Because you want to be able to set the throttle and leave it there. Yes. Okay. On a okay. small engine, yes. On a small engine. I'm learning a lot. So, that's cool. Have you ever thought about that? No. Have, have you ever thought about, have you ever thought about an intake like affecting the throttle because it's, it's going upstream? No. I no, bet. usually your foot on a car controls that throttle and the spring returns it. So it's always in the position that your foot controls. But on an engine like this, you set it at a particular RPM and it remains there by itself. If the engine did what it wanted to do, it would suck all the fuel it would want and it would run away. That makes sense because it's a it needs a negative feedback and if it's not there it'll just yeah but now people who actually work on small engines could give you a lot more educated words than what you're getting <laughs> yeah. i don't want a person that is paid to work on small engines i want to learn about carburetors from my dad <laughs> you could have picked anybody going down the street. <laughs> I think you're doing all right. And got more information. I think you're doing just fine. <laughs> you feel you can feel yourself learning too, can't you? Oh yeah, I'm learning. Go for it. It's running too rich, you can smell it. Hey! Hey, got it! You can almost kill it, can't you? Almost can kill it. That's a good carburetor. We got some crazy vortices. Do we? Oh, I see them. So that is on the inlet side. Turbulent flow is a vort vortices turbulence. Yeah, absolutely. You're just trying to get me riled up because you know Derek might watch this video. Derek, yeah, <laughs> I like Derek. I like Derek too. So, all right, so look at that. There's positive pressure. Oh, did you see that? Look. Okay, let me back up. Okay, so the, ooh, do you see that? Okay, look, I'm gonna back up and, okay, hold on, for the purposes of the video, we're on frame minus 23723. Look at that. You see when, so, okay, I'm going back. I'm going back to where the intake stroke starts. So look at that. So the fuel is coming up into the jet. That's the main jet, right? Where's that entering, right there? Yes, it's coming straight up in the middle of Venturi, and yeah. then the intake blows air. Blows air across it. 
But that's not really how it would work because it would really only pull fuel up when a second unless there was a delay in the line unless the vacuum delay mm -hmm. could there be a vacuum delay like oh. I, I put negative pressure on the line i start the fuel coming up the straw and then i shut it off and then the fuel keeps coming up and then the intake stroke so it, it squirts a little fountain up and then and then the fuel air i mean blown away blown then the away. air blows it away the tornado gets the fuel right But we agree this mixture is way too rich, correct? Yeah, I think so. Look at the uh, look at the blue tape on the front. You're trying to yeah. yeah. There's so much you're happening. Gonna, yeah, you're gonna have to analyze it and see. It are yeah, he, we're he halfway up the bowl. Aren't he just we? wants the engine to run. He doesn't want to like. Yeah. Analyze it. I just want to see how much fuel was in the bowl. The needle and seat works. It's just almost submerged. I don't understand why there's a little bit of backflow into I, unless the 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 intake valve isn't totally closed yet. You're you're coming up to push things out the exhaust, and the intake valve hasn't closed. Yeah, maybe that's one option. Look at all this stuff dancing down there. Let's run it again and just look at the top of the fuel in the bowl. I just want to see what that looks like. Ready? Ready to start? Yes, sir. Hold oh, on, oh hold oh on, kill it. I just saw something really cool and I triggered. <laughs> it just looked cool, so I, I just, I was like, I want that, so. It's not going low enough to disconnect the uh, the needle staying seated. Well, now the needle usually has a spring in the end of it. For that looks like a Westinghouse washing machine. Oh, <laughs> it does. We're getting oscillation on the inside because our post that's holding the float is not rigid enough. All right, we're learning. I need to machine this out of aluminum is what I need to do. I need to machine the whole thing out of aluminum. Then you can't see it. Well, we can still put the face on the front. Okay. Yeah, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, we've already seen what we want to see, but I kind of just want to know if I can do that. But you're getting to the point where an artist never gets through with his painting. He finally has to abandon it, right? Right. You're going to get to that point. You, you will never stop evolving and perfecting your design. So, your purpose in the beginning was to get high-speed shots of a carburetor. I think you've accomplished that. I think. I didn't think you could do it. Oh, come on. Each time you see a shake is a, a stroke, isn't it? No, I don't think so. You don't? I think it's a vibration mode. I think it's a harmonic. You think it's a tuning fork? I do. Yeah, it's it's okay, shaking. Okay, I see. You're I, when he just put his finger up there. I see. So you got an intake stroke. Well, there should be four. Should be intake, compression, power stroke, be, power stroke, exhaust. So yes. you should have four strokes for each, and you do have if you look at it right there. One, two, three, suck. One, two, three, suck. One, two, three, suck. It's four strokes. So you're saying the vibration of the float is the piston turning around. It's top dead center and bottom dead center. You're pretty smart for a redneck. Well, that's why they call it four stroke. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
He's right, isn't he? Yeah. One. Five, One. Seven. Two. Three. Does that mean the engine is not tuned, like it's not balanced correctly? No, the engine's doing what it's supposed to do. Top dead center, intake, compression, power stroke, goes up exhaust. The other thing to consider too is the carburetor sticks out from the engine in six, seven inches, whereas the... So it's, it literally is a tuning fork. Whereas this old carburetor Yes. That carburetor is bolted right up against it. And it's two and a half inches long. The moment on is much. Yeah. I'm just going to save this because we can. What kind of a float does it have? Turn that whole bow right there. Is it a brass float? So this is the original carburetor. Yeah. We're going to take the bowl off, and I think what you'll see, I don't know what the float's made out of, but I know this right here is your jet. Yep. It's much smaller. There's not a lot of stroke there either. It doesn't have to be. Just okay. So that's the float. It goes like that. Yep. Mm. So we've got a much larger carburetor. If it hasn't run in a long time, of course you use carburetor cleaner. But those bread tie wraps is just the right diameter. So all you said when you got down there and stops it up. Hmm. Now I need to go work on my generator at home while I'm thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we understand the carburetor on a macro level. We have built a functioning carburetor, which is awesome. But now what we need to do is I want to see the tight stuff. Like what happens when that jet of fuel comes up and the air intake comes over the top of it? What does that look like? Oh, yeah. I say we just do that, right? Yeah, I'll do it quick for the plastic is hot. Yeah, go ahead. So but, yeah, everything is hot there. Ready? Uh yeah. Here it goes. Go for it. Run as lean as you can. Lean as I could get. That was a choke open, and the throttle was wherever. Look at this. Oh wow! You can see a drop coming out. <laughs> Say again. You can see a drop of fuel coming out. You get ooh. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh. That was a sound. It's suspended. Type. That drop of fuel is suspended in the air, and then the suction comes and breaks it all up. That Derek is gonna love that because <laughs> <laughs> of turbulence. Yes. That's changing the laminar coming in here too, turbulent. Ooh! Converging, diverging nozzle. It, yeah. uh, so a carburetor is just a rocket nozzle. It's a rocket nozzle, that's yeah. what it is. I mean, you're speeding up. Watch it. Oh, 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 oh. It's a little drop and... Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's coming up and here we go. Oh, look at... This is a drop suspended. It's a suspenseful suspension. Yeah. Minus 17,200. That's cool. That's cool. So it's not vaporization like I thought. It's literally mechanical mixing. 
It's not anything like I thought it would be. What did you think it would be? I thought it would be just a, a vapor-like aerosol coming out of a hairspray can. That's what I thought. But no, this liquid suspended in the air, when it starts accelerating the airflow through there, it breaks it all apart. Ooh. <laughs> so why, why does every car not have a carburetor? Because cold weather, they suck. Fuel injectors are much better. Uh, carburetors with an art, not a science. Yeah. If you got one running good at high RPM, it doesn't run good at idle. You get set for idle. Uh, so the ideal solution is a fuel injection system. Yes. Okay. So how does a fuel injector work? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I think you do know. <laughs> it sprays it. It sprays a fuel into the directly into the combustion chamber I think I'm sure it is yes and not many people that I know can say that they have made a carburetor from scratch it's pretty cool isn't it yeah yeah I wouldn't necessarily call this scratch <laughs> well go from pieces of material to a functioning carburetor ah. Maybe in the lab somewhere. Carburetors run pretty good because you have not flooded the spark plug out. I'm going to pull. Yes, sir. She's purring like a kitten. Got it. Wow. So that jet made it all the way to the top of the Venturi. Mm -hmm. We're running way too rich. It was running good. Did it what we, what did we it... see and what we hear, you know, we don't know what the engine really needs because this has never been looked at before. That's a good point. So you're saying this might be normal? Yeah. Hey, we are rich. The way it's sputtering, it is rich. But look at it slapping against the, or yeah. I think, <laughs> That's a 3D printed <laughs> valve. Mm -hmm. And so I think we're starting to uh, be beyond the integrity level of it. Look. That secondary vortices down it's there. It's really mixing it up. It's, it's about mixing, isn't it? It is mixing, yes. Well, you're increasing turbulence going around that thing. So you are getting a secondary. Yeah. It's like putting yeah. a second mixer in the cake batter. That's awesome. So now I'm going to get what happens right when you pull the rope for the first time, when there's no fuel in the carb to when fuel goes in. I'm going to see what that looks like. Got it. <laughs> getting, getting some air from somewhere. <laughs> it's getting close to not being able to turn it off. That's good. It's fun that we almost couldn't turn it off. <laughs> There's a little bit of risk a perpetual here. Perpetual motion machine. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. Okay. This is a tighter shot. We use more fuel that time. Oh, look at this! What?
So this is the first pull. So it was flat. The reason it's running at an angle like that is because of the... It's sucking air by it, even though we're trying to close it off. So we've got to design the, the butterfly to be stiffer. Look at this. So on the intake stroke here, it deflects. You can see the rope pull. How cool is that? You can see the rope in one frame. They're in the foreground, and you see the carburetor in the... I could not have imagined a shot like this. Oh, wow. Yeah. Pam, pam, pam. Time to uh, time to mill those out of aluminum, I think. That's PLA, so I bet that PLA is getting broken down by the by the petroleum. No gasoline? Yeah. Okay, okay. Because it wasn't that flimsy to begin with. No, we're at the limits of our yeah. testing, I think. <laughs> oh, oh, you can actually, you can see the fuel coming up in the in the straw in the jet look at that you can see you can the, you see that the flow rate there you can see everything if that if that butterfly i call them butterflies what would you call it yeah if, if that butterfly was milled out of aluminum that that'd be pretty it might good not start it might not start that's a good point what do you think dad it's a lot of work it's what i think it's not as fun as what i thought it would be from a distance when I'm sitting at the keyboard and reading comments, uh, it's fun, but taking the video shots, I don't even want to think about editing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot more work than what I thought it was. Really? Really. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Yeah. And I know you've taken a hundred shots to get one good one, but still, you got to get the bad shots, don't you? You have to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Is this the first time you've seen me do this? No, you've seen me do a little bit of this. No, I have. I have, but I'm tired today. <laughs> really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're more empathetic today because you're hey, tired? Hey, I'm retired. I'm supposed to be taking a nap right after 11 o'clock. <laughs> Second nap of the day. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hey, we didn't need the fire extinguisher. That's good. Well, we had it. That was an insurance policy. Okay, trying something crazy. We remove the choke right here. Just pop the choke out, and then we're just gonna look straight down the barrel to see what happens there. But in order to do that, we have to get the proper mixture to start the thing, which I now understand how to do with this blue tape over the end here. So, a lot of hands to try to get a really interesting shot, but we're gonna try it. I'm going to block about three fourths, or at least half of it. Yeah. All right, so that's gonna lean our mixture, right? Yep. Hold on. Ready? Yes, sir. You're, are you pulling focus? I'm going to have to once it's running. Yeah. Put a hit. Where is it? That doesn't work anymore. It ain't going to run. We're not getting any. Try it now. Cover this whole hole. All right. Nope, I didn't get it. I, I need a little bit more time to focus. Yeah, okay. Can we jump, can someone jump in and grab the throttle? Yeah, uh, no, you're going to have to meter it with your finger there. Yeah, so I'll meter it with my finger and you grab the throttle. The throttle's wide open right now, but it shuts off automatically. So if you'll grab it and shove it back the other way. I'll be pulling it this way. Other way. That way? Keep it there, yeah. Shoot, let's do that with tape. What am I thinking? That's all right, I can do it. Hold on. It'll never suck it to begin with. Does that mess up the shot? Does that no. the light off or anything? I love that we understand... Uh, Carburetor. Carburetor. So when you do that, just drop the rope. Okay. All right, ready.
I can literally throttle it with my thumb. Die engine! I don't want you to have any. Oh, I'm getting it. Oh my goodness! There's your vapor. There's your vapor. There's I your saw vapor. the vapor. There's a vapor right there. Got it? Where it coming out? No, in the intake manifold. Oh yeah! Whoa! That's that's vapor. Yep. So that's what happens when you get vapor lock. I don't know. I just I heard, don't know. I don't know. I've just heard vapor lock before. I don't no, know what's going no. on. Okay, so. Vapor going what away. just happened is dad cranked it i covered i choked it with my hand he was operating throttle for a second there we were yeah. we were vibing we were insane yeah. <laughs> so, so, so i was running choke dad was running throttle trent was trying to frame the shot It flattens the dropout. It does. It flattens the dropout and it distributes it. Look at it! Yep. What's that? Oh. <laughs> That's really freaking cool. It's the drop comes up when the intake air hits it, it flattens out. We could not see that from the 90 degree angle. No. I now, oh, <laughs> I now have a three-dimensional understanding of how a carburetor intake air interacts with the fuel coming up in the main jet. That was worth it. Did you have that understanding? Mm -hmm. So imagine if that geometry was circular then. I wonder what effect the square is having on the... How oh. That, you mean the, the tube that we made so that we could see into it if it was a pipe? Yes. Yes, it would distribute it evenly. Evenly, yeah. That's unbelievable. It's it's taking, it's serving up a raindrop and then slapping it. Serving up slap, serving up slap. It's kind of like your levitating water drops video. Um. We can get closer. <laughs> That's so cool. We can get closer. <laughs> That's awesome. Have you already saved this? Uh, no. To the flash. I've already saved it to the flash. The, the mag is full. Okay, uh, we're going to save it to the SSD. We don't have any more fuel in there. We're going to try to get that shot but tighter. <laughs> Dude. Dude, that was intense. That was so awesome. What this carburetor tries to do is increase the surface area on a molecular level right all right what do you mean in order to get full complete combustion you need all the surface area that you can get of the fuel because ideally you have an oxygen molecule right next to a fuel molecule mm -hmm. and when the ignition happens if you got a good proper mix it, i think vapor is that white stuff that we've seen at the end of that run it's atomizing it Okay, so I'm pulling that. Yeah, I can get it started. I just want to see that. Are you focused on the hump down there? Mm -hmm. What's our What's our uh, aperture? Hold on. Six seven. If I come in tighter, if I can give you more light, would you take it? How's yeah. that? Yeah. yeah, that's great. But I can't get to the starter right. Let me pull it up a little bit. Oh. How about we crank it and then I'll bring the light down? Yeah, let's just do that. Dude, go for it, Dad. Let's get focused on letting it run. 
Yeah. Ready? Yes, sir. Watch you're going to hit the carburetor with the rope. There you go. Okay. Out of fuel. Yep. You well, put more in it. Uh, did you get a good shot? I think so. Okay. Carburetors are amazing. They're on all kinds of small engines. One thing I really like to think about is there is going to be a time where there is a maximum number of carburetors on the planet, right? Like brushless DC motors are on the rise, obviously, because battery technology is getting better. So the carburetor has been an amazing thing for years and years and years, but it's going away. I, I, it's never going to completely go away, I don't think, because the, the amount of power density you can get for a volume of gasoline, I mean, I think it's here to stay, but it's just really interesting to think that this thing that basically ruled the 1900s is probably on the decline sometime soon. I don't know when, but that may happen. Anyway, we have a video coming up on fuel injectors and we've already filmed it. It's really, really cool. My buddy Jacob is a diesel mechanic. I went and took a high-speed camera. It's gonna be really cool. I hope you enjoy that. But thank you for watching this video here on the second channel. It was really fun to be able to share this moment with my dad with you. Dad, I know you're watching. Um, I appreciate you teaching me all this stuff through the years. Uh, it's, it's great. You've made my mind what it is, and I'm grateful. Anyway, thank you so much. I'm Destin. This is Smarter Every Day 2. You're getting smarter every day. Have a good one. Bye.